In Hawkins Falls, people say... The person who takes advice is often wiser than the one who gives it. Hawkins Falls, a television novel that tells the story of life in small-town USA. The romance department seems to be well in hand these days in Hawkins Falls. Dr. Corey and Lona Drewer have reached a level of understanding that pretty much secures the future course of their lives. And surprisingly, Sue Riga and Mitchell Fredericks appear to be heading toward an understanding of their own. But misunderstandings have a habit of popping up at the most unexpected times and in the most unexpected places, as we're about to see. Fly, you sly thing, you, you sly, sly thing. I am. Oh, I thought you were Lona. Oh, well, then what do you mean by calling my good friend Lona a sly thing? Don't you know? I might. All depends on what you mean. Well, you tell me what you know, and I'll tell you if it's what I know. Let's do it the other way around. Well, I suggested it first. Because it might not be what you know at all, and then I'd be saying what I know. Well, same goes for me. All right, then we'll both hold on to what we know. I can hold out just as long as you can. And I can certainly hold out as long as you. Fine. Fine. Hey, what are you doing over here baking a cake in Lona's kitchen for, anyway? I have my reasons. Oh, I'm sure you do. Just like I have my reasons for coming over here, I suppose. <clears throat> Possibly. Listen, it isn't possible that you know a little bit more about what I know, is it? It all depends on what you know. Hi. Oh, what do you say, Lay? Listen, I just heard the most interesting news. You did? I sure did. Elmira, I bet it's the first time anyone beat you to some news. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be too sure about that, Lay. I might just know what you know. <laughs> Oh, well, yeah. then you won't be too interested in hearing about this. <laughs> Maybe I have already. <laughs> <laughs> you both are being so secretive. I'm sure I know what you both know. Maybe even a little more. Oh, not this, honey. This is new. Well, what do you think I have? All right, then. No point pursuing the point any further. We all seem to know what it is. I know I do. <laughs> So do I. <laughs> Certainly made me happy, I can tell you that. <laughs> me too. I know I couldn't be more pleased. <laughs> and we must all be talking about the same thing. Oh, isn't it great? <laughs> Jay Shipley told me about it. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Nona said that the doctor was coming over for dinner tonight, so that's why I baked a chocolate cake. Chocolate's his favorite. Oh, boy, this is really great. Oh, those two are really meant for each other, you know that. Lona and Dr. Corey, perfect. Absolutely <laughs> perfect. Oh, and they couldn't have picked a better time for a wedding. Christmas time is just ideal. Why, even the ground looks like a wedding cake, if it snows, that is. <gasps> a winter wedding. Oh, <laughs> Winter weddings are nice, Elmira, but they're being married in June. Oh, no, you must be mistaken, Millie. Uh, uh, Christmas comes out on a Friday this year, and they're being married on Sunday, uh, 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 Christmas weekend. They're being married on June 12th, Elmira. Hey, wait a second. You ladies seem to have the facts mixed up a little bit here. Lona and Dr. Corey are getting married on March 15th. I remember because that's the last day income taxes are due, and Dr. Corey will be getting two new exemptions. It's June 12th, late. You're both wrong. December 27th. March 15th. May Shipley told me so herself. She heard the doctor propose in the drugstore when she was there last night, and she heard them set March 15th as the date. Oh, you've got it twisted, Lee. May Shipley told me that she heard Lona suggest Christmas weekend to be married. She was in the bookstore when it happened. May told me that she heard about it because she sat in back of Lona and the doctor at the movies, and they agreed on June 12th. Now, May ought to know because... Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Double O-O. We've been duped. And I really thought we had something there for a minute. I'll make a pact with you. This little episode stays right within these walls. What do you say? Agreed. Agreed. Next time I get a story from May Shipley, I'm going to check on it before I start moving through town with it. Now remember, we all have something on each other. Mum's the word. You can count on that, Elmira. Goodbye. Bye, Elmira. Boy, that's a funny one. 
You think we'd learn that the simplest way was the best way. All we had to do was to ask Lona if it was true. I sure thought I had something there. And I wasted a whole morning baking a cake for a special occasion that didn't exist. Oh, not exactly a wasted morning. Chocolate cake has always been a favorite. Oh, Maggie. Mmm. Tastes good enough to eat. I can't make that out. I simply asked how the bookstore business is today. I haven't had but one customer all morning. Bought a 15 cent greeting card. Well, I was over at Swanson's a minute ago to pick up the copy for their advertising, walk through the book department, and they're doing a brisk business. I can't figure it out, Mitch, unless it's this location. I think that must be it. You're in an alley here. The only door in it besides yours is the bank's there. Not many people come in and out the back door of a bank, I guess. And the only traffic we get through the alley is people cutting through it to save time. They're not supposed to come in and browse. Well, I think it's a little too early to tell yet, Lona. They tell me that one of the big automobile manufacturers sold only a half a dozen cars his first year in business. Well, I thank you for the comparison. And I've heard it rumored, and I can't confirm this, you understand, but they say that big oaks from little acorns grow. Who told you that? Well, it came up the other day in the pool room. A fellow with a big cigar and a checkered suit and a derby hat said it. He said he was a big shot, so I figured he must know. Well, I can see I'll have to spend more time at the pool room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm missing out on a lot of inside information. Hi. Hi. April, how are you? Well, I'm relieved, I can tell you that. Remember yesterday the judge wanted me to show him the bills I got from that big spender who came into the shop? The money's all right? As good as the word United States. Wanted to let you know in case he came in here. Just sell him anything he wants. <laughs> well, I talked to the guy yesterday. Kevin Ludlow is who you mean, isn't it? That's the one. He bought hundreds of dollars worth of clothes from me. Sent them on to his mother and sisters in Oklahoma. Well, he claims he's not in the oil business, which is a refreshing change. A rich man from Oklahoma who didn't make his money in oil. <laughs> well, anyway, I just wanted to let you know. Well, I appreciate it, April. I better be getting back to the shop. You see, Lona, why don't you hang signs in the alley pointing this way? You know, you have to know your way here to find this place. Now, that's an excellent idea, April. Why didn't I think of that? Why don't you try it? You might get a little traffic going in this perfectly beautiful store. <laughs> Bye now. Well, thanks for the suggestion. You know, that's not a bad idea at all, Mitch. I'll call Finney's Ice and have him come right. Mitch! Lona, are you all right? <laughs> are you all right? <laughs> What's going on out there? Somebody help me! Kill me! Take it easy. Here, quiet down, April. You're going to be all right. What happened? I don't know. Was it the band? Both of you stay right inside. Don't go out there, Mitch. Mitch! Oh. Are you hurt? Oh. No, I have no. Back door of the bank opened. These two men came running out and shooting. But you, you weren't here? Oh, oh, get hold of yourself, April. Uh, I'm all right now. I guess I'm all right. Somebody must have held up the bank. Did you get a good look at the men? I don't know. They had things over their faces, hoods like. I didn't see much except the flash of their guns. That awful panic, Lona. I don't think I've ever been so frightened in my life. Uh -uh, let me get you some water. Mm. That was about the clumsiest attempt at holding up a bank I ever heard of. You all right? Did they get the men? Well, they're out chasing them now. I can't imagine who'd pull such a fool thing. They had no system at all. The guard said they came in, pulled out guns, and demanded money. Only person they really covered was the guard. Did they get away with much? No, they didn't even get a thin dime. Well, oh, that certainly is a funny one. Not to me, it isn't. Look, Lona, when you had those signs painted, why don't you have a bullseye put in? If there's going to be any shooting around here, I'd prefer they'd shoot at that. Let me walk back to your place with you. No, no, thanks. I'm fine now, Lona. Well, things might be a little slow around here, but you can't say they're dull. You sure you don't want me to walk back with you? Oh, thanks, Mitch. How about that? The first time anybody's ever tried to hold up any bank around here. Well, yeah, and in such an amateur way, too. Well, I suppose we should be grateful for that. Grateful? Wait a minute. Yeah. Come over here a minute, Lona. You know how close this bullet came to you? Closer than I like to think. 
Well, I better get on out and run the story down for today's issue. Here, you can keep this, and uh, any time you feel unlucky, just take a look at it. Not the kind of souvenir I think I want to keep, Mitch. Maybe you ought to go back to the paper. I'll drive you over, and then I'll stay on the story. Oh, break. no, I'm fine here now. Not much likelihood of them coming back to try it again. Well, if I should get tied up, I'll call you. Maybe Leif can help you put the paper out today, okay? However you want to do it. Fine, I'll talk to you later. Hey, what's going on out there? Well, i got to run now, Leif. Mona, what is it? There's a crowd gathering at both ends of the alley. Well, it all happened so quickly. A couple of men tried to hold up the bank a few minutes ago. No kidding. Uh, standing there, talking to Mitch. We heard a couple of shots. One of them whizzed by me. A look. Holy smoke. W where'd you get this? Missed me by the tiniest fraction of an inch. Take a look here. It landed in this book. Wow. Boy, if something like that happened to me, I think I'd fall over in a faint. Not such a bad idea. Luna. Luna. In Hawkins Falls, Lona Drewer is Bernadine Flynn. Millie Flagel is Roz Tui. Leif Flagel is Wynn Strachey. Mitch Fredericks is Jim Bannon. April Winfield is Vera Ward. And Elmira Klebe is Elmira Wrestler. Your announcer is Hugh Downs. Lighting by John Casagrande. Audio by Harry Beddingfield. Settings are by Stanley Rames. Costumes by Joan King. The associate director is Dave Gray. Technical director is Ed Reed. Hawkins Falls is created by Doug Johnson, written by Bill Barrett, directed by Frank Pacelli, and produced by Ben Park. We take you to Hawkins Falls each day, Monday through Friday, at this same time. Come with us Monday, won't you? This program comes to you from Hawkins Falls by way of Chicago.